Good morning to you. Good morning, my name is Emma King um, and I am delighted to be with you this morning. Um, I am here um, at the St Mary's um, Garden. Um, you can see all behind me how beautiful it is this morning. Um, I'm here on Friday morning filming this so you can hear the noise, the hustle and the bustle of a normal Friday morning um, here in Chalcombe. So, um, but it is beautiful. It is so beautiful out here. I thought, why go indoors when it's such a beautiful day outside? All of the frost that has been on the ground has, um, has slowly gone away with the sun rising. Um, you can see the beautiful sunshine behind me and all around me um, and the birds are singing it just feels a little bit dare I say it it feels a little bit spring like so um, maybe that is coming for us who knows um, but I'm really really excited to be with you this morning um, as we think about transformation and um, we think about weddings because today what a beautiful day it is it is the perfect absolutely perfect day for a wonderful wedding um, so um, let's be thinking about that this morning so um, let before we before we begin let's pray so loving God we just thank you for the Sun that shines down on our faces we thank you for the birds and all the animals that we can hear all around us. We thank you for the hustle and the bustle of everyday life. And we just ask that you be with us this morning as we begin this service. Amen. Amen. Okay, so our Bible verse today um, comes from the Gospel of John, um, chapter two, and it's the wedding in Cana. The birds are excited by that, you can hear. So, on the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six, six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 80 to 120 litres. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, so they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guest has had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. What a wonderful reading today on this most beautiful of days. Now, I don't know about you, but I love a wedding. I just love it. The excitement of seeing a bride for the first time. The questions, what will she wear? What colours will the bridesmaids be? I wonder what flowers that she'll have. There's just so much joy in everything to do with a wedding. I love the, the hustle and bustle of the church or the hotel or the garden or wherever it is that they are getting married. I love that hustle and bustle when you first arrive. 
And all of that before the biggest question of all, what do I wear? And then the dreaded, in my, in my eyes anyway, the dreaded, oh my goodness, I've got to wear heels. And then wondering what, when, at what point I can take them off and wear my flip-flops. But what I love the most about weddings is seeing family and friends um, that I haven't seen for such a long time together for a happy occasion. And people greet each other as if they'd only seen each other yesterday. It doesn't seem like you haven't seen each other for a while. At my own wedding, we got married at four o'clock. We went, we got married and then went straight in to um, a big party. We didn't have a formal sit down meal. Um, we didn't have formal speeches. Um, we just wanted to celebrate the fact that we had come together in this most precious of times um, with all of our family and friends. And we didn't want to leave anybody out um, due to finance side of things. We wanted everything um, to be perfect for everybody else as well as us. And perfect for us was having everybody there. Um, and that was what was important to us. That was what was important. So our wedding, it was big. You know, we started off with just wanting a small wedding, but we ended up with a really, really big wedding. It was loud, it was crazy, but it was so much fun. But most importantly, it was family. It was friends. It was our church community, our church family. It was stress-free because it was just so much fun. But most importantly, it was love. Love was at the heart of our wedding. An important part for many when they are planning a wedding or, or going to a wedding um, is not only the dress, obviously, the dress, but the food and the drink. Food and drink brings us all together, doesn't it? How many of us have felt a sense of pride and honour when we get an invite to a wedding? And when we open the wedding invite, we realise that we have been selected as one of the chosen few that have been invited to the sit-down meal or the afternoon reception, not just the evening do. We wonder, don't we, for months and months what the food will be like. The happy couple have spent hours deciding what food that they are going to serve their guests and choosing the best wines to go with that meal. Maybe even going on wine tasting afternoons to make sure that it's just right for everybody's guests, for their guests. So taking us back to um, our Bible reading, can you imagine the horror at being at a wedding and being told, there's no more wine? Can you just imagine? Imagine the stress that would overcome the newly married couple or their families. Imagine the worry and the stress of not being able to serve your guests. All those months of planning and then there's no wine. I can imagine the bride or the, the couple getting married. Everything is ruined. I can imagine those words coming out because there's no wine. <laughs> but of course, it's not really, is it? It's not what marriage is about. It's not about the wine. We live in a world now where we actually wouldn't worry about that. You probably find that most people sat at the tables wouldn't even like the wine that has been chosen. Nowadays, we would probably, at the table, have a drink of choice that we'd bought from the bar before we'd gone and sat down. Maybe we might have a pint of local bitter on the table, a bath ale, for instance. Or maybe we might have a fancy gin with lots of um, fruit in there that we wouldn't normally have at home. Maybe we might have a nice refreshing lime and soda with, um, with a nice bit of lemon on the side. Or maybe simply we might just have a really nice glass of iced water. 
if we were somewhere without a bar, we would probably send a group of friends down to the local Sainsbury's to stock up. Imagine the fun that people would have tottering down to the local Sainsbury's in their heels to go and get all of the drinks for their, their friend's wedding. And we'd all laugh about it. Many years later, we'd all be saying, remember that wedding that we went to? And they ran out of wine. It was so much fun. And they would all think that was a really good day. And we'd remember it with so much fondness, wouldn't we? But these times of this wedding that Jesus was at, these were different times. These were not times like today. These were times where if you ran out of wine at your wedding, it would bring huge shame on your family. In these times, a wedding would have meant the whole community coming together, even neighboring communities coming together. And these weddings would go on for several, several days. And that is a lot of wine. Let me tell you, if you're having a wedding for whole communities, that is a lot of wine. So to be so publicly shamed, people might have thought that actually, that this meant bad luck on the wedding couple. A book I was reading just recently by Tom Wright described John's gospel as what he calls a treasure hunt with careful and sometimes cryptic clues for us to follow. The word John used for clues is signs. The book continues to say that John is setting up a series of signposts to take us through the story. The signs were all occasions when Jesus did just what he had promised Nathaniel that he would do in chapter one, verse 51, when he said, he said to Nathaniel, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the son of man. And the point of the signs is that they are moments when heaven and earth connect. So our reading today from John's gospel is just this, a sign that heaven and earth connect through Jesus. But yet we know that this was Jesus's first miracle. He says, my hour has not yet come. Or in a different translation, my time hasn't come yet. That was Jesus's reply to his mother, Mary, who tells the servants whatever, to do whatever Jesus says. Now, I kind of imagine being there at that point. How many of us, I know that I have done this, have put our children forward for things only to have them rolling up their eyes at us as if to say, why have you put me forward for this? And I imagine that happening right at that moment. But yet Jesus does go forward and somehow the servants do listen to him. Here we see the beginnings of Jesus's compassion for other people in need. The first of the miracles, but all with the same outcome of transformations. The significance of turning water into wine should not be lost on us. Jesus shows signs in many different ways throughout the gospels. For example, he helped the blind to see, the paralyzed to walk, bringing those in death to life, the stormy seas into calm waters, two loaves and five fishes to feed 5,000 people, and then the ultimate miracle of all, the dying on the cross and rising to life again three days later. Here in this miracle, we have the ordinary water turned into the best wine. 
when normally the best wine is served first. Jesus is transforming water into wine to signify the effect that he can have on our lives, not just then, but also now. We are told that Jesus said in chapter 10, verse 10, that well-known verse, I have come that they may have life, life in all its fullness. He didn't say he was going to give us the cheap wine, did he? He said he was gonna give us the best wine, life in all its fullness. That is the best wine. So we may just be an ordinary water, an amazing wedding. But if we do what Mary said, do whatever he tells you to do. We can be transformed. We can be transformed into a wonderful, best that we can be, rich with love and compassion, kind and generous wine. We don't need to be the cheap wine. But the question is, are we, and I speak for myself as well, are we willing to do whatever Jesus tells us to do to be transformed? Amen. Amen. So we're going to have a time of prayer now and I thought that it would be really good for you to have something to look at while I'm praying. So I've got here a glass of water and a glass of wine. So if we just focus on the transformation between water and wine. Loving, amazing God, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the transformations he has brought to so many lives and continues to do. We thank you that he is still performing miracles so long after that first miracle. We thank you that we can still see the signs that he leaves for us in the everyday normal things. Lord, we pray for the world right now. We pray for the government that leads each country. We pray that they turn to you to help them with the choices and decisions that they have to make. and the choices that they make, that they do in your strength, Lord, not in their own. Trusting God, we pray for our Queen Elizabeth. We thank you for her service to this country. We know she puts her trust in you in all that she does. So we pray that you surround her with your love as she makes difficult decisions this week regarding her own family. We pray for those who are suffering at this time, whether it be with their physical health or with their mental health. May your healing love surround them and bring them peace. And we pray for those people who have passed from this life into eternity. We pray for their families as they grieve. And we pray that you surround them with your loving arms. God of mercy, 
help us to put right any wrongdoings that have happened this week. Help us to have hearts full of love and remove any hurt or anger from us. And help us to live in peace with each other. Everlasting God, we thank you that you continue to transform us through your love. Like turning water into wine. Amen. Amen. So I thought um, to finish with today, I have found this lovely poem um, by a lady called Sharon Schubert. Um, I don't know whether you've um, heard her poems before, but I really loved this one. So I wanted to leave you with this as a kind of blessing, but a kind of prayer as well. So um, the poem is called, I Turn to Jesus. Sometimes I get discouraged and a tear comes to my eyes. Sometimes love, life doesn't seem fair and I can't understand why. Sometimes I want to give up when things aren't going quite right. Sometimes it seems like a waste of time, not really worth the fight. Those times are when I turn to Jesus. He listens to my prayers and suddenly the way is easier. The problem's not so hard to bear. He is a comfort when the way is rough. Through his word, I find relief. I'm reminded that he's ever near. On his name, I have believed. He doesn't promise earthly treasures if we follow in his way. He does promise to fulfill our needs each and every day. So let me walk a little closer, Lord. I know you love me so. When problems are overwhelming, I have a friend who knows. I just love that poem. I just think it's wonderful. And um, so that was a blessing to you all that whatever is happening in your week this week, I pray that it will be a good one. And I pray like today that the sun just shines down on your faces and on your lives. And please just walk in the light. So have an amazing week, everybody. And I'll see you really soon. Take care. God bless you.